Hey, what's going on guys? So I have not been to the Aquarium Reddit page in a while. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what's new in Reddit. We did the uh, the other one a long time ago, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. First post. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks good. So yeah, this has to be at least like a 12 foot aquarium or something like that because like these panels, especially some of these big ones here, I would say like looking at my window here, I would say that's at least like what, seven foot, six foot. So that's at least a 12 foot tank right there against the, you know, skyscrapers here or whatever against the windows here, a lot of natural sunlight um, with some additional lighting. And I'm pretty sure like the neighbors would be able to see that. That looks good. That looks real good. Let's read some of these comments here. It's like, you know it does. Of course it does. Come on, man. Just wanted to see y'all's thought on my Nano Reef. This actually looks very similar to my first Nano Reef. Uh, that was a cube, the 25-gallon cube. Uh, I pretty much stacked, you know, same thing here. Threw some, you know, macroalgae in here. Threw some, like, little frags, a little Nemo up in here. So that looks pretty good. There's some other additional side views of this. Very cool. Dang, jumping into SPS already, that's 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 some skills there, man. I don't even have any SPS. I tried one or two back in the days. It just wasn't my thing. It couldn't keep them alive. They kept bleaching like this right here. This one that's over here that's bleached. Hey, it happens. All right, moving on to the next one. 350L discus tank. Uh, five months. Looking good. Looks like he kept the same species there, which is pretty good. It's a corner tank, looks like. Very cool. Very basic. Uh, uh, very basic plants here, uh, which is easy. You know, anything that will survive the the heat really for, for the discus. They're very cool. Ooh, look at this fish. Does it look like a puffer. Oh yeah, that's a nice puffer. Wow, it's like red and all that. It's eating that shrimp. Dang, that's a nice puffer, man. Very cool. Ooh, very sick planet tank very green very lush it looks so small though like even though it says like this is 10 gallons i'm pretty sure it's 10 gallons but it looks so tiny it looks like a five gallon very nice colors it looks like you know he's doing the right thing or this person's doing the right thing nice you know drop checker on there co2 mm. that's that's very nice Ooh, okay. Here's the next one. New to the hobby, needs to feed back five gallons before I begin cycling. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, if it's your first tank, you have a filter, you have a light, you know, you have some gravel, it's, that's fine. It's, it's going to be fine. You just have to keep up with the water changes. You'll be good since you don't really have any live plants in there. Um, it could be good. That's really odd tank size, I would say. One, <laughs> 123 gallon, like, wouldn't it be like 125 gallons? I don't know. That's, that's kind of odd. An odd number. But okay. Very nice. Oh, we got ADA up in here. This is like what I started with. The 60P. Very basic. Very simple. I would say um, some of these uh, rocks. I, I did the same mistake when I started escaping too. Like some of these rocks are a lot smaller. So when you place the rocks uh, initially hardscape with no plants or whatever, it looks fine. But... The one thing that people don't factor in is the height and growth of plants. It'll cover a lot of these um, rocks. So, for example, like this rock here, like normally it'll be about this big, but because the height of the plants cover it, it makes the rocks a lot smaller or it makes them seem a lot smaller. So, one tip that I found that's really helpful for scaping is get a rock that's bigger than what you think you would need because when you put plants in there, it'll be like, a you know, you'll lose a quarter of, of the rock, you know, in plant coverage. So maybe just using some bigger rocks, I would think it'll be fine. But yeah, I, I did the same mistake when I started, like I said. Um, you know, people learn from it. So a very nice plant either way. Like he's growing really good uh, carpeting plants there. Ooh, this is a very nice shrimp. I'm down, I don't think I've actually seen this. A black snowflake. Wow, the blue is really nice against the black hair. That's very cool. I bet you that's pretty expensive too. <laughs> Amano is going ham on this algae wafer. Yeah, the shrimp really goes crazy. Like once you drop food in there, they just swarm it. Like my shrimp does the same thing. Like they just, they just, they just go crazy. First planet tank coming soon. 
pretty nice. I actually like, I, I really dig this, uh, this wall that you made here. So um, keeping the plants all up in here. Very nice big driftwood because a lot of these plants will cover a lot of this down here. So that's going to look good, man. Especially if you get like some really tall plants in the back here. Maybe even like mid plants up in here to kind of cover this driftwood a little bit. And these coming out here looks pretty cool. And this wall here will just be covered in plants. That looks pretty sick. It's going to be, it's going to be really nice. Years old, 100 gallon tank suddenly did this. Fish are gasping um, at the surface. I'm guessing that I'm slacking on the water changes. Uh, old tank syndrome. Yeah, it could be it could be due to um, the water change or lack of water change. I don't know, you know, what the schedule is like for this person. The water changes hasn't been keeping up, or you haven't been do doing water changes, and it's just been building up here. This right here, maybe it's an indication of like, um, you know, disturbing the substrate, or maybe adding in tap water that had some, you know, high ammonia initially, and then like causing it to spike. Or bio load feeding, you know, additional food or whatever. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that can, can, can do that. It says right here that the fish gasping at the surface, it looks like not enough oxygen. Uh, another thing is like you got to kind of aerate your tank pretty well, pretty decently, so that uh, the bacteria can stay healthy and grow. All right, let's do one more. So we got driftwood freshly uh, collected at the beach. Uh, what should I do to them to make them aquarium safe? Um, if you collect them from, you know, anywhere from nature or whatever, I would say scrub down the outside at least to get all the dirt and debris out of there. Um, personally, what I like to do is I like to rinse them down with just normal water. Um, people like to boil them. You can boil them so to sink them a little bit better. That's good too. That'll kill anything in there. I like to also spray the whole wood with just like hydrogen peroxide. It'll just kill anything organic on the outside. Let it sit for a little bit. Um, and yeah, um, Pretty much you'll add it to your aquarium. It'll start growing fungus on the driftwood uh, within like a week or so. That's normal. It might throw tannins into the tank. That's normal. Um, that, if you don't boil the driftwood, of course. Um, but yeah, just let it throw it in there. You know, if you have shrimps, you have like little critters that eat, you know, those um, algae and, and whatnot that grows, the fungus that grows on the driftwood. They'll eat it. They'll be fine. So, yeah, I, I would say that's probably the best thing you can do to keep it safe. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different. I've done, you know, a Reddit uh, reaction video in the past. I uh, figured, you know, it's been a while since I did one. So, here's another one. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. And like always, so awesome, guys. Peace.